our next speaker um, is going to be Pastor Janet. She has a nonprofit organization called Hope Alive. Um, they focus on family and homelessness. Um, just this past December, um, there was a event called the Sleep Out, um, where you know, kind of demonstrated what it's like for homeless people to be out in the cold, to sleep outside, not have any place to go. So if you were involved in that, and I know um, some of us from Agents of Hope were, it kind of puts a whole new perspective on life. Um, there are a lot of things that we clearly take for granted. Um, you know, cars, our home, heat. Thank you, thank you. I was so blessed by um, Mr. Juan's um, 5 a.m. pep talk. And um, I do have something like that in, in a form of um, prayer. You know, I go to my prayer altar in the morning and I'm declaring and decreeing that this day is going to work for me, it's going to favor me, it's going to speak for me. Amen. So it's so important, that 5 a.m. pep talk, and so many things that you said, I was blessed by. So as um, I was introduced, I'm Pastor Janet, and um, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Shola for giving me this platform to talk about my vision of um, Hope Alive Outreach Ministry. But I'll... Um, I am a pastor, but my, you know, my background, you'll be surprised. I was actually in the IT field <laughs> as a web engineer. And, um, but um, as a pastor, you know, we pastor in, um, within the four walls. And also as a PK, my father was a, was a pastor that established his own ministry. I grew up in ministry. So... Ah, uh, surprise, surprise, I married a pastor. Amen. And I myself am a pastor. But I came to discover that um, I just wasn't being fulfilled as a pastor. You know, we serve people. And let me tell you, uh, that calling of a, of a pastor is not easy. You better be called before you say you're going to do it. Because you will meet so many different forms of demons that will come your way. Many will be smiling, many will be backstabbers, many will, will have, you know, altars that are um, created to, to cause confusion and strife in your midst. So it's, it's not easy, but it was necessary for God to put me in that calling to develop a thick skin. Amen? So last, you know, for the past few years, actually, I have been especially in the winter time like this. And I'll be driving or I'll be watching the news and I'm seeing homeless people. And I'm thinking, um, wow. Full disclosure, you know, you know, I experienced homelessness myself as a... Um, uh, how old was I? <laughs> But, you know, early on in my life, starting out on my own. And um, although I never slept on the street, I was hopping from couch to couch. So there are different forms of homelessness. And I thank God that I never experienced that one of sleeping outside. But I would, you know, I would just wonder, you know, how can we as um, society allow, you know, such a thing to happen? And uh, I, I found that the homeless have become invisible in our society. We're so used to seeing them that we have become immune to their plight. And a lot of us, we have this misconception that it's by choice that they're there. You know, they, cho they have chosen that life for themselves. And often, that is not the case. Mental illness is part of it, is one of the main things. You know, a few years ago, I did run a homeless... Um, um, sorry, I, I ran a, a group home for women with mental illness. And you will find that a lot of um, people on the streets, it's health reasons, mental illness. A lot of them also, it's um, abuse in the home that drives them. They would rather sleep on the street 
than sleep in a bed where they're going to be abused. Amen? And, you know, a, a lot of time also it's, I'm talking about sexual abuse, I'm talking about domestic abuse. Amen? And a, a lot of times people sleep in the, in the cars and many times certain people that are homeless are not counted. So in America there are lots and lots of people that are homeless that are not accounted for. Now, um, last year, you know, you know, I've been pastoring a church for the past eight years. And um, I was just, at the end of 2014, I was just in a really, really depressive state. And um, I was like, God, I just feel like I'm not leaving. I, you know, I, I'm not, Sunday morning comes, anything to do with me comes, and I'm not jumping up and down like I used to be. I'm not excited, you know. It's the same old, same old, you know. I'm like, I'm just not feeling fulfilled. I'm like, I know that there's something that I'm called to do, that I was birthed to do, uh, the reason why you created me, and I'm not doing it right now. And I need you to let me know, without a doubt, my life purpose, my reason for existence. So around December 2014, I just went into a, a, a season of prayer and fasting. And I, you know, and, I, and I went to my prayer altar, and I was praying, 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 you know, January came, February, March, and, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm fasting throughout all this time, you know, and still nothing, and I'm like, and I was really, like, really depressed, really depressed, like, is this life worth living? That's how down, that's how down I was, you know, not contemplating suicide, but just like, you know, is this life worth living? You know, I didn't see. Um, um, it, it, okay, it, I'm a empty. I have two kids, and um, you know, my my oldest, my oldest son, he's going to be 22 this year, and my daughter is going to be um, sorry, he's going to be 23, and my daughter is going to be 20 in in June. So, they're, you know, they're they're no longer at home. <laughs> so I'm an empty nester. And, um, and I'm thinking, you know, and I believe I did a great, kid, uh, a great job raising my kids. They're phenomenal children. And um, they're in Florida. both of them are in Florida. My, my son is working in the airline industry in Orlando. And my daughter is in college in Tallahassee studying biomedical engineering. So that, you know, they're living their life. But I find myself like, so the kids are out of the house. I got the ministry, and what was left? It was just so empty. And then May 12, May 12, 2015, May 12, 2015, I got the vision and I wrote it down. <laughs> Amen. It was around um, 4:30, 4:35 o'clock in the morning, and it was so clear. I got up and I'm telling you writing everything down. I had a blueprint. And, you know, and it was clear that my ministry was to the homeless. My ministry was to the homeless. And I was, as I was getting the vision, I was just writing everything down. Right down to, the, you know, the people that I needed to, to, to make contact with. Um, um, the, what kind of building I needed. The kind of programs that I was going to run that you know, would need to run. And I was writing everything down. Writing, writing, writing. It. You know, the book of Habakkuk said, you know, write the vision down. When you write it down, you are declaring and you are, you are testing that this is it. This, it, it will be so. Amen. And all of a sudden I had this new lease in life. You know, I just felt so alive. And that's why, that's where that, that name came, came. Hope Alive. Hope Alive, that's the name of the, of the shelter. Hope Alive Outreach Center. And um, that very day, actually, I was, I, was, I was making phone calls. I was making phone calls. I was calling, you know, my prayer warriors. I need you guys to, to start, you know, lifting this project up in prayers 24-7, you know, for God to give me more clarification what needs to be done. 
And um, as time came on, you know, the vision became clearer. So it would be a family, it would be a homeless shelter for families because I noticed that um, the homeless shelters that we have right now, they actually separate families. They break up families. You know, um, if, you are, if, if you are a, um, a unit, uh, a, a, a husband, a father cannot stay in the same shelter as his wife or children because men are not allowed there. And I'm, you know, I'm all about family. I'm all about keeping the family unit together. And so having a family homeless shelter is so important to me that they remain, the family remain together under the same roof. And um, so, and then, you know, there has to be a job training center at, that fam at, at the shelter. And there has to be a Head Start program because we want to not only give um, our guests shelter and food, but we want to be able to give them education, life skills, amen? Sorry, I'm going to my church mode. <laughs> you know, um, life skills that will stabilize them and, you know, bring, they can regain or maintain um, um, a, a, a standard of living that is good for them and their children, bring them out of homelessness. So um, we did the sleep out. We did the sleep out. That was a vision. And um, Agents of Hope was a wonderful partner there. And let me tell you something. You get to know the soul of a person by what they can do for somebody else. You know, I approached many people. And, you know, I'm, I, think, I think I'm a pretty good speaker. And um, other things I will invite people to they will come, they will attend, but ask somebody to come and sleep outside with you in winter time. <laughs> it's, it's a whole new board game. They're like, what? Outside? Not inside, outside. I'm like, well, what do you think the homeless people sleep? You know? And that's where I got to see the soul of this man. A beautiful soul a caring soul, a compassionate soul. And, um, and I'm like, you know, that's the kind of person, that's the kind of partner I want. That's, those are the kind of people that um, I want to be aligning myself with. People that can go beyond the call of duty, that can sacrifice themselves because we're so selfish. As, as humans, we are so selfish. We're all about ourselves. You can't sleep outside for a couple of hours just to raise awareness about the plight of the homeless, you know. So I got to see people in different light. And many of them in ministry, many with pastors and evangelists and apostles in front of their names, you know. And they'll tell me straight, oh, I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that just shocked me. It shocked me. It really shocked me. So, um, um, our next big event that's coming up is, um, it's, it's, we're, we've themed it um, Love Thy Neighbor. Love Thy Neighbor, it's a benefit concert to raise awareness and to raise funds for our building campaign. And that will be July 9th in Southfield. And I hope you guys will come out and support us and help us to continue raising awareness about the plight of, of the homeless. We all need to come together and we all need to love our neighbors. Amen. Thank you.